Hi guys, quick tutorial on rest calculation with GDAL. Two questions that we're going to answer today. First of all, why do we need rest calculation? And then how do we do it in GDAL using the command line interface? For today, I've prepared three examples that hopefully highlight the possible applications of raster math and give you an understanding on how to use raster calc in GDAL. First example concerns the extraction of a river network using this flow accumulation raster on the left which I've prepared. We will identify rivers using a minimal threshold for the flow accumulation and use this as a mask to extract river pixels from this flow accumulation dataset. In the second one we will compute the well-known normalized difference vegetation index or NDVI which is just a simple band ratio between the near infrared and red band. And then finally, we will use GDAL to convert a multi-band RGB image to single-band panchromatic image right here, using equal fractions from the red, green and blue band to increase contrast. The only GDAL program that we need today is gdalcalc.py. And for a GDAL command, it actually has very few options, so not too much to worry about. The only thing we really need is to provide an expression for our calculation, an out file and an input. So let's open our command line and get started. Here are the files that we're going to work with today. We have a flow accumulation raster, we have the red band and the near for red band from Sentinel-2 stored into different GeoTIFF files, and then finally we have a multi-band Sentinel-2 RGB image. For the first example, we are going to work with the flow accumulation and filter streams above a certain flow accumulation threshold. As I said, the function that we need is called glcalc.py. So the first thing that we will provide is our flow accumulation raster. And we do that with the option A. You can see if you have multiple input raster files, you can name the first one A, second one B, and so on. We just have one raster to work with for this example, so we will call that A and put in our flow accumulation. Now the second thing that the gdalcalc function needs is an expression. And for this we need quotation marks. And what we want is from our input file, all the pixels that are greater equal some pixel accumulation threshold, and let's just pick 1000. We can set a no data value, so 0 in this case, and we need a name for our output. Let's just call this rivermask.tiff and run it. Now our result looks like this, so we have filtered out all the pixels from our original flow accumulation raster that have a flow accumulation greater 1000 pixels. Now if you would want to keep those original flow accumulation values but still filter out all those smaller streams, you would do a similar calculation, so let's call those rivers. You would just multiply the mask that you get by filtering all the pixels greater or equal to 1000 by the original raster. And if we run this, we have filtered all the greatest streams but still store the original flow accumulation within all the valid pixels. Let's move to our next example which is the computation of the NDVI. This works similar to a previous example, so again we need gdalcalc.py. And this time we have two input rasters, we call the first one A, so that will be our sentinel2 band 4, so the red band, and then the near infrared which is sentinel band 8, and we call that B. And now the expression that we need to provide is equal to, we can look at the formula again, the near infrared, so band 8 minus band 4, the red band, divided by near infrared plus the red band. So let's do that in here. Our near infrared band is band 8, so B, minus A divided by B plus A. And now the only thing that we need is an out file name. Let's call that Sentinel2 and DVI. Oh, and of course, this should be Sentinel2 band 8.tiff. Sorry about that. Okay. Now here is our NDVI raster with values between 0 and 1, higher values indicating more vegetation. We can make that look a bit more colorful. Like this, so now we see red areas like here this riverbed, they have less vegetation, while the hill slopes are covered by more vegetation and thus appear greener on this color scale. Final example is going to be the conversion of a multi-band image to a single band image, and you've guessed it, we will do that with gdalcalc as well. Now here we are working with three different bands which are however stored within the same geodiff file. So what we will do is for our first input we will put the sentinel2 RGB 
and then we will need to select a band. So for our input A, we will select the band 1, which is the blue band, and then we will provide a second input. Now this could be another file or it could be another band as well. So let's call that B, and here again we will put the Sentinel 2 RGB image, and then for our input B, we will select the band 2, and we will do the same thing for a third for the red band. And now the calculation that we're going to do is simply going to be an addition of all those three bands. However, we will not just add all of them together because that would just result in really high reflectance values. Instead, we will take equal fractions of the reflectance values stored in all three bands and add them together to compose the final image. So to do that, we need to multiply all of these bands by one third or 0.33. And let's name the entire thing Sentinel2 pan for panchromatic.tiff and see what we get. Here I present our final result, a composite image of the red, green and blue band now forming a panchromatic scene. By the way, if you don't want to do raster calculation from the command line, gdalcalc is just the equivalent to the raster calculator in QJS, so you can of course put the same expressions for the calculations that we did down here. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Next one will be about how to polygonize raster data and rasterizing vector data. So if you're interested in that, see you soon and have a lovely day.